Okay, I'm doing a recording for the rest of the homework problems. We already did problems one, two, three, and four in class, so you should know these. I think I did five also, but I'll just go ahead and redo it right now. So let's look at, I'll try to be very clear in explaining to you what we're doing. The topic of our problems is you're working with rational expressions like fractions, okay? So fraction is an example of a rational expression. So we're going to have to look at each part to see if we can factor it or cancel it out. So let's look at this first part. We'll find a highlighter here. This part here. Okay, so can we do any factoring out of this portion? And I'm going to bring it down here. Yes, we can. So we can factor out an 11. Even though it's not in parentheses, it is the complete expression, 11n plus 121. So we're going to factor out an 11, open parentheses, n plus, and you're dividing each thing by 11, 11 and n to 11 and go one time, 11 into 121 and go 11 times. So we have factored out the 11 from that expression. So let's look at the expression on the bottom. Can we factor out anything from this expression? So you got to put it in different compartments. Okay, we did the top. Now we're doing the bottom. Don't try to look at the whole thing. You may get confused. So what can we factor out? We have an 8 and a 16 as a common factor. So we can factor the 8 out. So if we factor the 8 out, we'll have n minus 2. Okay, so let me make sure I wrote that down right. Oh, this is not a plus. This is a division. The worksheet is very small, so it was hard for me to read that. This should be a division sign. Okay, now we're going to bring this down and write in plus 11. This is divided by n plus 11, division. Now, we put that over 1. So we all know that when you divide, you're going to flip. Make that line a little straighter. When you divide, you're going to have to flip the second number. Remember from middle school. So we're going to divide this. So we're going to flip this number, okay, and rewrite this whole thing. Okay, you notice I have it rewritten. I have it flipped. Now, what can we cancel out? Okay, so these expressions go together. So you have n plus 11 can cancel n plus 11. Okay, can we cancel anything else? We have an 8, we have a 1, 8 over 11. No, it looks like everything is there. So what is our final answer? If you see here, the final answer is you multiply straight across. You have 11 over 8 times n minus 2 because that's what's left. That's the final answer for number 5. Okay, this is number 6. You see I have it written here. And we're going to look at it and see what can we factor out first. Let's look at one portion at a time. Let's just look at this part here. Can we factor anything out of this part? Yes, it looks like we can factor out a 3. So you see we factored out the 3, and now we have 3 parentheses x plus 4 over the 5x. Okay? So... We're going to just rewrite, since we're multiplying this, I'm just going to rewrite the other term beside it. Doesn't look like we can really factor anything out from each area. So I'm just going to rewrite the 10x over x plus 4. 
now we're going to re-examine and see. Some people get really confused with the parenthesis and not the parenthesis. The reason I'm putting a parenthesis around this is this is the full expression, okay? This is the full expression here. This is sort of like saying this is 3x and that's x. This is like the variable. So now let's see if we can cancel this out. We can because we can cancel out x plus 4, x plus 4. Now let's look the other way. Can we cross cancel? Can we reduce or factor out? Or I would say reduce 5 and 10, cancel it out like middle school. So we can cross out the 5 and put 1, cross out the 10 and put 2. So now what will our final answer be? Okay, so you can see, we can, we can also miss something else. Can't we cross out the x's? Because you can cross divide here. So we can also cross out the x's. So now we have on top 6, and we open the bottom. It's all been crossed out, so nothing's underneath that. So that means our final answer for number 6 is 6. Now, this is number 7. You notice in green, I have the problem written as it was originally written on the paper. Now we know it's division, so we're going to have to flip this. So what I did, I turned it over, and you see how I've rewritten it. Now let's look at each term and see what can we factor out. Each little area here, can we factor out something here? Yes, we can take out a 2. So we take out the 2 open parenthesis and that's going to be x plus what three and we still have underneath we still have our x plus four okay now let's look at times what can we factor out here we can factor out an x for sure the smallest x is x cubed, so we can factor out an x cubed. So divide x cubed into x cubed, we get 1. x cubed into 4x to the 4th, we get plus 4x. And on the bottom, we have x squared. Okay, now let's look and see what can we take out, what can we factor out. So this is uh, x plus 4, we factor that out. Okay, so we cancel that out, so that left just x by itself here. So if you see, I multiply 2 times x, is what's here, that gives you 2x, and I still have the x 1 plus 4x here, and I still have to write the x plus 3. You can't multiply those two together. You can't cancel out anything. You just have to include both of them in the answer. It doesn't matter what order it is. So then on the bottom, only thing you have underneath here is x plus 4. So this whole thing here is the final answer. Okay, let's take a look at what we can factor here, okay, what we can cross out. If you look at this expression here, 9x squared minus 1, we went over this some last term, so this does represent a difference of squares, okay, it does represent a difference of squares. So we can split up the 9 into 3x and 3x. in both parentheses, which I use a binomial, and so it's plus 1 minus 1. Okay, that's what this expression is now. We're changing that. We've changed it to this. We factored it to two binomial terms. Now, can we cross cancel here? Yes, we can divide 5 into 5 and you get 1. You can divide 5 into 10 and you get 2. From here, is there anything that we can eliminate? So we know this is the numerator, the denominator going across down. Can't we get rid of the 3x plus 1? Yes, we can. I know it looks like a lot of cross outs, but let's see what's left now. So on top, nothing's there. This is a problem 8. 
Nothing's there but a two on the top. So I'm gonna change to black. So the answer is two. And there's a two X on top rather. But you could, in fact, you couldn't cross out the X. You could just reduce the five and the 10. So we have two X on top. So let's see, what do we have on the bottom here? Five is gone, this is gone. We only have three X minus one. I hope this is helping you all. This is number eight. Okay, this is number nine. Let's first, we can go a little faster. Now look at our numbers. What can we cross cancel here? We can divide the eight and the 12 by four, right? So this is four going eight two times. Four will go into 12 three times. We already did nine. I did that for Isiana. I'm not going to redo that one. Look at the other recording. Okay, this is number 10. So if you know number 10 is division, and you see clearly how I flipped it. I just turned it over. Now let's look at our numbers. Can we cross out or cross cancel, reduce whatever terms you want to use, the 7 and the 21? Yes, both are divisible by 7, so this changes to a 1. This changes to a 3. Can we cross divide the 15 and the 25? Yes, both are divisible by 5, so this is a 3, and this is a 5. Okay, what about the A's? Okay, so let's just, I'm going to just write it out so you're able to see it well. So it equals, this is 3A squared. I'm just going to leave it here and then you can see it. And the bottom is 15. We have 5 is 15 a cubed. I could have factored out with larger numbers because I'm going to have to reduce again, right? So I can divide 3 by 3 and get 1, and 3 and a 15 will get 5. So that reduces to 1 third, right? Now, what do we do when we subtracting exponents? That's going to end up with a to a negative 1. We never want our variables to be negative, so we have to move it to the bottom. So we can write just a to the first power, or just plain a. This is our final answer for number 10. OK, I made a, a change here. When I reduce, it, reduce this, this should be one and this should be five because you're dividing three and a 15 and it goes five times so three times five is 15 and the a will go in the denominator because you're subtracting the exponents and it gives you a negative a so that means it's in the denominator okay uh you see i've already done 11 12 and 13 i'm going to go over the steps with you you see here i just reduced the three over 15 to make it one over three subtracted the m's and you ended up with a negative three so i had to move it into the denominator to make it one over three m to the third power and for number 12 i just looked at each term and this is what i factored out i factored out a five here to make it five times x minus two then the denominator i again factored out a five to make it five times x plus two Cancel out my fives and end up with this answer. Here, I factored out x here because x was common. So I ended up with 2x plus 1. And I just wrote the x cubed down on the bottom. Now I'm going to have to subtract my exponent. So I'm ending up with a negative x squared. So that means that needs to go in the denominator and keep the top the same. That's that answer. Okay, our last recording here, you notice I wrote the problem. I had to factor out the a in the denominator, I have a minus 3. So since I have that factored out, I can cancel out these two a's and end up with 2 in the numerator over a minus 3 as our answer. Now I'll do the rest of the questions, number 16, 17, and 18 in class.